for the first time in New York history, a room full of people froze to death in July. It's an unimaginable evil with the power to kill by fear itself. Like, literally scared to death? guys so today I'm gonna to be making a quick vlog because we're going into Cineworld in Falkirk to see the new Ghostbusters movie that's what it's called and um, it's been ages since we've actually been to a cinema I think it might have even been pre-pandemic I'm not sure anyway I thought I would make it into a couple of shorts and then I thought why not let's just turn it into a vlog you get to see the countryside on the way there it's an absolutely miserable day, but we're going to be nice and warm inside the cinema. And we're also going to see if there's any exclusive merch or any exclusive food deals related to Ghostbusters. So, here we go. Stick around after the vlog and review for some super cute animals. How is that after your beer? So mm. God is water. Is your water your life? Tips of the old study walls. Absolutely cracker. Fill your heart with iron. To give some context, I was never a big Ghostbusters fan. I liked the original two films, but it wasn't something that I actively sought out to watch. I think I last watched the films during the first lockdown in 2020, and maybe that's influenced my review now. Also, I studied media, communication and film at college for a few years, and my theatre qualifications come from a position of writing for performance, which included a screenwriting course. It can sometimes be hard to watch films without being hypercritical, so I was pleasantly surprised when I actually enjoyed my cinema experience and was able to immerse myself in the action. With that being said, there were some things that I considered lazy writing that could easily have been addressed at an early development stage. This would have given the film a higher score from me. Don't get me wrong, the overall vibe and narrative were good, and as a whole package, I really think they nailed the typical nostalgic Hollywood blockbuster. If I was a teenager today and I went to see Ghostbusters Frozen Empire with my mates, I wouldn't be disappointed. 
Let's talk about the good points first. This next part of the review will contain some minor spoilers, so if you want to skip it, please go to this time code. I was pleased to see that the set design and the overall aesthetic and the way the CGI ghosts had been created were not too jarring. By this, I mean that they reflected the feel of the original films. Slimer didn't look too modern, the firehouse still looked authentic and the costumes were muted colours which resembled the well-known style from the 80s. Another element that I felt was authentic and most importantly believable was how the original characters were incorporated into the new storyline and also the dialogue they were given. From the start, Frozen Empire gave the audience a world with a clear back history of Ghostbusters. From using the toy adverts from the 80s, referring to previous ghost activity, this was a world parallel to our own, where you could really believe that it was 2024 and the retired Ghostbusters were living day-to-day -day lives in their chosen roles. The pace of the story was more or less even. There were a couple of points where I found myself looking around the cinema rather than paying attention, but that could be because it was practically empty and the seats were a bit uncomfortable. In my opinion, they could have lost five to seven minutes of the film's dialogue and scenes and still got the emotion across. I did enjoy all the nods to the original franchise when it came to the style of dialogue and the occasional one-liners from well-known actors. It was just the right amount of cheesy humour. Now, this next section is going to be the not-so-good points and it covers a major storyline spoiler. So, if you haven't seen the film, please skip ahead to my conclusion. And of course, the cute animals. Phoebe Spengler is the granddaughter of Egon Spengler from the original films. I haven't seen Ghostbusters Afterlife, so I didn't know her backstory. The good news is, this didn't matter. Because of the clever writing and the cues from her interactions with the main characters, you can pretty much tell who she is and her personality. Now to the one thing that really irritated me, what I consider lazy writing. In Frozen Empire, Phoebe is clearly struggling with being the younger sibling and also the youngest person in a family where dangerous ghost hunting antics take place regularly. This causes her to be moody and miserable for a large part of the film, which is fine. She's a 15 year old coming to grips with her place in society. After disobeying her parents and deciding to go ghostbusting on her own, she causes a major incident and is reprimanded. However, and here's my gripe, throughout the first act of the film and into the second, there is no catalyst for the major plot point which basically causes the end of the world. Let me explain. If you look at what motivates Phoebe to leave her body, it's the ghost of Melody who she has become attracted to. On top of this, I believe the writers want the audience to feel empathy towards Phoebe because she is frustrated with her parents telling her she's too young to help out on missions. But the way this is portrayed is not with any urgency. So what happens is, as you come towards the end of the film, you, well I, begin to wonder why Phoebe took such dramatic steps and caused the apocalypse. Here are my two very easy fixes that would have improved the two plot holes of Melody's romance and Phoebe's parents' unfair restrictions. Firstly, once Phoebe has played chess with Melody and then met her another time at the diner, the third time could be in the firehouse where they go to hold hands or touch, but Phoebe's hands go right through Melody. This doesn't have to be associated with dialogue. We could get the teenage angst and lust from their eye contact, etc. Then, when Phoebe breaks into the new lab and decides to use the machine to become a ghost, this would feel more poignant and also add to the pain of the betrayal. Secondly, I would have the interactions with Phoebe and her parents escalating to the point of an argument. A proper shouting, snotty, crying argument. This is something that I might discuss more in general in another video, but I feel that in modern Hollywood films, you rarely see parents shouting or disciplining their children in the way that I would have been in the 80s and 90s growing up. 
I truly think that if there had been some explosive argument between one or both of her parents or maybe even her brother, where she slammed the door and ran off looking for Melody, the high emotion would have made the major plot point more believable and logical. For instance, when her dad is talking to her through the door and she's not there, if that had been after a major bust-up with slammed doors and tears from Phoebe, this would have made his speech incredibly heartwarming. And then, if the camera were to pan to the open window with a curtain flapping, we can all get the idea of her running off in the heat of the moment and making a poor decision based on her immediate state of mind. These two writing choices for the Melody storyline and the parental relationship really stuck with me. Maybe I'm just old-fashioned. I mean, I am a millennial and nearly 40. I was just disappointed that the major apocalyptic plot point seemed, for want of a better word, avoidable. This also had a knock-on effect where I didn't really care about Phoebe. She just seemed like a moody, spoiled teenager who caused all of these life-threatening scenarios and then was praised at the end. I didn't really feel her remorse or relief. With all of this being said, it comes to my rating. I think it's only fair to use a couple of ratings so that the film can get an honest review. The cinema was Cineworld in Falkirk. It was extremely clean and the staff were friendly. Unfortunately, the seats were a weird size and there was this huge gap where my bum was and I kept falling backwards into it, so I had to stuff my coat down there. And I'm not even a small skinny person. Alex also said they were uncomfortable. We were in screen one in standard seats and in the centre of the cinema. There was also a weird hole in the audio low mid-range, which sounded like the bottom right speaker was blown out. But when Alex checked at the end, all the speakers were working and you could hear it where he was standing. For these reasons, I give the cinema experience 6.5 out of 10. Also, guys, having 20 minutes of TV adverts that we've already seen lots of times and then only a couple of extended movie trailers was a bit annoying. The next rating is the script and dialogue in the movie. This covers the way it's been written and directed, as well as the actor's delivery of the lines. Were they believable? Did they push the plot forward? Were there any gaping plot holes? Actually, I give Frozen Empire 8 out of 10. And finally, the overall concept of the film. Did it feel just like the media company were trying to make money out of the franchise? Were sponsors shoehorned in? Booking.com, I'm talking about you. And would you be able to comfortably watch the film again or recommend it to your friends? This aspect also got an 8 out of 10, so quite a high rating. Overall, my day out watching Ghostbusters was really good. I think 90% of my viewers would like to watch this film, even if you're not a big fan of the franchise. Think of all the major action films like Indiana Jones, Mission Impossible and even the Batman series. They're generally a fun hour or so in a crazy alternate universe. Sometimes we all need to get away from reality and just enjoy ourselves in someone else's story. So much, can I see the ones that look natural, like carp, are genuinely my favourite. They're so beautiful. That guy. Hi. I still had a tank, I'd have you. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to get a bit of 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 a bit
He is like genuinely a gold goldfish, do you know what I mean? We do need another feeder. We'll get them some more feed. <laughs> 